All right, we're going to do the intro 18 print in the packet. This is the bicycle chain shape. Um, we use this a lot for showing demos to people, demonstrations, because this is going to have a lot of information that we do not know on the print. However, this print is very typical of what you would see on the shop floor. So we like to use this one because it shows we don't have to do a lot of trig. We don't have to analyze points in a cam, CAD cam system, something like that. We're able to use the information that we have on the print. So we're going to start the new program. Program Manager, New Conversational. I'm going to go to Part Setup, create some stock geometry. It's a box, yes. Um, this is six inches in X, three inches in Y, and one inch thick. Front left corner is zero, so I don't need to shift anything. I already have some tools set up. This is a three quarter inch end mill. I've used that in the last few prints, so that's already set up. I'll we'll go to uh, input, part programming, milling, lines and arcs. Now, as we discussed in the intro 16 print, the previous one that we did, we have to make some decisions here. We have to think about where are we going to start and what's the direction we're going to travel. So in this case, the only two really good locations that I can see to start is either all the way over at the nine o'clock position on that far left radius or the three o'clock position on the, the right radius or that large radius. And I'm going to start there. So looking at the print, I need to find my X start point. So if it is four inches out to the center of that large radius in X, then I have to add the radius of one inch to that to get out to the edge of the part. And that's going to be five inches. The Y will be 1.5. We're going to go to 0.1 above. Let's go down uh, 0.5 for the depth. Use tool six. And we're going to make this a pocket boundary. So this feature is actually pocketed all the way out a half inch deep. Now we have our starting point. Now we have to think about which direction are we going to go to program this. The pocketing information is still good. I'm going to do pocket type of outward. Um, let's do a pec depth of 0.1. Our step over percent, 50% of the tool will work just fine. So we're ready to go to our next segment. Well, we're inside this pocket and we're going to go, we want to climb mill. So I want to go counterclockwise, cutter comp left. So my next segment, or the which will be segment one, I'm going to do an arc. It's going to be a counterclockwise arc. And we need to find the end point. Well, we don't know the end point. Very often people will assume it's up there at 90 degrees. It's not. If you can picture we're going to take that arc, we're going to sweep past that 90 degree position to an angled line. So we don't know what that X and Y position is, so we're going to leave it blank. If this was a straight line that we were coming into, it would be easy to figure that out, but we're not. We're going into an angled line that goes down, so um, we don't know what that point is. So we literally leave them blank. We do know the center. It's four inches and 1.5. And we know the radius. Well, the control had enough information that it figured out what the radius was there, and it is one inch. So we know that we're on the right track so far. The other thing, had that given me a sweep angle from the start point to the end point of that, I could put that in here for sweep angle, and that would have also given me an X, Y end point. But I don't know what that is either, so I leave it blank. Next segment, we're going to do that angled line at the top of the part. It's a line. Now, I don't know the end point because, again, we're going to go an angled line into a radius. So we're going to go past that 90 degree point on that left arc. So we don't know what the XY point position is. We don't know the angle and we don't know the length. It doesn't give us any of that information on the print. All we know is that that is a line. It's all we know. We're going to leave the rest blank. Next segment will be an arc. Now this arc we have a lot of information for. We know what the direction is. It's counterclockwise. 
We don't know the end point. Actually, we have two options here. We could stop at the six o'clock position, which we do know the X, Y end point. We know the center, we know the radius. And we could put that in as half of that arc, if you will. We'll go half the distance, and then our next segment would be another arc finishing that. Or we can, what we're gonna do is go all the way around that arc to, to the line on the bottom side of the part. So we have two options. If I do what I just said, I go to the bottom side of that feature to the bottom line, I don't know the X and Y endpoint. So I'm gonna leave them blank. I do know the center, one inch and 1.5. I also know the radius. It is a 0.5 radius. Now, as soon as I put that in, you'll notice that it was able to back figure the endpoints of that line Therefore, it's got the endpoints of that arc before it. So we're already starting to see it fill in information that we didn't know before. Next segment will be that line. Again, we know nothing about this line other than the fact that it is a line, so we leave it blank. And we're gonna finish with the last arc, counterclockwise arc, back to our starting point, which we know. It was five inches in X, 1.5 in Y, the center point was four inches and 1.5. It is a one inch, it was able to figure that. It was also able to figure out the um, sweep angle. And we're able to cut that feature and it looks just like it does on the print. So we're also going to include intro 19 in this video. Intro 19 is the exact same feature, only it's a boss. It's not a uh, pocket that we've cut in the part. So that means that if we were going to climb mill around this, we would be going in the clockwise direction, not the counterclockwise direction if we wanted cutter comp left. So we'll be cutting on the outside of this shape, not the inside. We'll no longer be pocketing it, we will be leaving it standing. So I have two options. I could start a brand new program and program it just like I did here, only going the other direction. Or I can use the power of the control to simply reverse this. So if I go into my review screen here and I highlight the contour that I want to edit, click on contour start, you see that I have a button here, a soft key that says reverse contour. If I click on that, it will just have reversed everything. And now I'm going to be cutting, as soon as I change it to cutter comp left, <laughs> I'll do a cutter comp left draw. And you can see that I'm now cutting on the outside of that same feature. We can now use Something we've talked about in the past was the profile inside, profile outside, things that we used on the frame and the circle. Well, we have that same ability here, only it's called profile left and profile right. If I select on profile left, I get that max offset field that we've seen in other um, features that we've programmed. Let's put in an arbitrary one inch in there. And you'll see that it'll start one inch away stepping in just like we've seen before and we'll be able to clean up that hole outside. Looks like it would have taken a little bit long, more than one inch to completely do this, but you get the idea. So that's using the power of the control to flip our contour direction. Um, that's also something that is very handy when we do mirror imaging. So hopefully that, uh, hopefully that shed a little more light on lines and arcs and we'll see you in the next video.